United States have been at the forefront of aviation for years and have not relented with the continued reinvestment in the country's aviation sector. Through the development of new generation jets, upgrade of old jets that have proven efficient, the U.S. has once again outdone itself and suppressed the world with the F-15. The F-15, a fighter jet that is renowned by many nations for its speed and agility, has been recognized as too weird by the Air Force. Which of its features has deemed it weird? What does the F-15 have to offer the world of aviation? Join us as we explore the reasons why the most modified F-15 fighter jet ever built was too weird for the Air Force. McDonnell Douglas's invention, the F-15 Eagle, is an American twin-engine fighter plane designed to dominate the skies in all kind of weather conditions. In 1969, the United States Air Force chose McDonnell Douglas's design due to the need for a superior air fighter. The F-15 Eagle officially joined the United States Air Force fleet in 1976 after taking its first flight in July 1972. This fighter jet is one of the most impressive modern fighters and had over 100 victories in aerial combat without a single loss, predominantly attributed to the Israeli Air Force. Primarily serving as an air superiority fighter, the F-15 Eagle has become an important part of various air forces all over the world, including the United States, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. Despite its original focus on air superiority, the F-15's design includes a secondary ground attack capability, even though it was not extensively utilized. This adaptability led to the development of an enhanced all-weather strike version, known as the FF-15E Strike Eagle, which entered service in 1989, which also found its way into several nations worldwide. The development of the F-15 can be traced back to the early stages of the Vietnam War, a time marked by inter-service rivalry between the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy concerning the future of tactical aircraft. During this period, Defense Secretary Robert McNamara advocated for a shared aircraft approach, encouraging both services to utilize common aircraft designs, even if such a strategy necessitated performance compromises. This directive was evident in the joint USAF and Navy initiative known as the TFX program, which sought to develop a versatile aircraft capable of serving as a medium-range interdiction platform for the Air Force while concurrently functioning as a long-range interceptor for the Navy. The goal was to streamline the procurement and operational logistics by maximizing the commonality of aircraft across the two branches, despite the challenges associated with reconciling different requirements and priorities. In January 1965, McNamara asked the Air Force to think about creating a new, affordable tactical fighter that would be used for short-range missions and close air support, replacing older models like the F-100 Super Sabre and various light bombers. There were different opinions on which design to go for. The Navy liked the Douglas A-4, Skyhawk, and LTV A-7 Corsair II, which were mainly attack planes. On the other hand, the Air Force was more interested in the Northrop F-5 fighter. Even though it was not as good for attack missions, it could defend itself. If the Air Force went for a pure attack design, making sure it could control the air was crucial for a new aircraft. A month later, a report suggested that the Air Force should consider buying the F-5 or A-7 for their needs. However, it also proposed thinking about a new and more powerful aircraft to make sure it could maintain air superiority. This became even more important after losing two Republic F-105 Thunder Chief planes to older MiG-17s during an attack on the Tha Hoa Bridge on April 4, 1965. The idea was to find the right balance between a plane that was good at attacking targets and one that could protect itself and control the air in combat situations. In April 1965, Harold Brown, who was in charge of defense research and engineering, suggested looking into the F-5 and starting studies on a new aircraft called FX. These early studies aimed for 800 to 1,000 planes and focused more on being agile than super fast. They also said the plane should be able to attack targets on the ground to some extent. 
General Gabriel Desusway took control of Tactical Air Command on August 1 and continued to support the idea of the FX, but he wanted the plane to be a bit slower, going from Mach 3.0 to 2.5 to keep the costs down. By October 1965, there was an official plan for a fighter that would be great in air-to-air -air combat. This plan was sent to 13 companies on December 18, asking for their ideas. Around the same time, the Air Force picked the A-7 for support missions on November 5, 1965, which made the need for a specialized air-to-air -air design even more urgent, since the A-7 wasn't good at fighting other planes. Eight companies submitted ideas, and after narrowing down the options, four were chosen to develop their concepts further. In total, they worked on around 500 different designs. Most of these designs had wings that could change shape, variable sweep wings, weighed more than 60,000 pounds, could go as fast as Mach 2.7, and had a thrust-to-weight ratio of 0.75. By July 1966, when these proposals were examined, the planes were roughly the same size and weight as the TFX F-111. However, like the TFX F-111, these designs weren't suitable for being considered air superiority fighters. In simpler terms, they weren't the right kind of planes for controlling the air and winning in aerial combat. Around this period, the Navy determined that the F-111 wouldn't fulfill their needs. Consequently, they initiated the VFAX program to create a specialized fighter design. In May 1966, McNamara instructed both forces to examine the designs and assess whether the VFAX could align with the Air Force's FX requirements. These assessments went on for over 18 months and revealed significant inequalities in desired features. The Navy prioritized loiter time and mission flexibility, whereas the Air Force had shifted its focus primarily to maneuverability. This underscored a misalignment in priorities between the two branches, emphasizing their distinct needs and preferences for the ideal fighter aircraft. With air superiority in mind, the F-15 was eventually designed with an all-metal semi-monocoque fuselage and a shoulder-mounted wing with a modified cropped delta shape. The wing has a 45-degree leading-edge sweep-back angle, and ailerons and a simple high-lift flap are positioned on the trailing edge. The absence of a leading edge maneuvering flaps is compensated by low wing loading and a fixed leading edge camber that changes spanwise along the wing. The tail is composed of metal and composite materials, including twin vertical stabilizers with a thin tail plane and rudders made of aluminium material honeycomb structure with boron composite skin. The F-15 has a spine-mounted air brake, retractable tricycle landing gear, and is powered by two Pratt and Whitney F-100 turbofan engines. Its cockpit is situated high in the forward fuselage and provides the pilot with increased visibility and a 360-degree field of view. The ability for the F-15's maneuverability is as a result of the combination of low wing loading and a high thrust-to-weight ratio, allowing tight turns without losing speed. It can rapidly climb to 30,000 feet in about 60 seconds and possesses the ability to accelerate vertically under certain conditions. The airframe incorporates advanced superplastically formed titanium components from the 1980s. The F-15 has a special radar that can see and shoot at things down below, even when there's a lot of ground stuff in the way. It uses advanced computers and easy-to-use displays to make things simpler for the pilot, and it only needs one pilot, which makes it lighter. Unlike some other planes like the F-14 or F-4, the F-15 has just one clear canopy frame, giving the pilot a good view in front. The U.S. Air Force brought in the F-15 as the first special fighter just for the Air Force since the old North American F-86 Sabre. The F-15 A and B variants are designed with single seat for air superiority purposes, while the B and D models include a second seat for training. The E models use the second seat for a weapon systems officer. Unique among modern fighters, the F-15 lacks distinctive turkey feather aerodynamic exhaust pedals due to design issues during development, 
resulting in a 3% aerodynamic drag increase. An occurrence that proved the F-15 resilience was when an Israeli F-15D lost most of its starboard wing in a mid-air collision. The pilot managed controlled flight and a safe landing, leading to research on damage adaptive technology and the development of the intelligent flight control system. In addition to its capabilities, the F-15 can carry different air-to-air -air weapons. Its automated system allows the pilot to release weapons safely using the head-up display and controls on the engine throttles or control stick. When switching between weapon systems, visual guidance for the selected weapon automatically appears on the head-up display. The F-15 can be equipped with various combinations of four distinct air-to-air -air weapons, and they are the AIM-7FM Sparrow Missiles, or AIM-120 AMRAM Advanced Medium-Range Air-to-Air Missiles, positioned on its lower fuselage corners, AIM-9LM Sidewinder, or AIM-120 AMRAM Missiles on two pylons beneath the wings, and an internal 20mm M61 Vulcan Gatling gun integrated into the right wing route. Specially designed low-drag conformal fuel tanks of CFT were created for the F-15 C and D models. These tanks can be attached beneath each wing, flanking the engine air intakes, adhering to the same load factors and airspeed limits as the basic aircraft. While they slightly reduce performance by increasing aerodynamic drag and can't be jettisoned mid-flight, they have lower drag than conventional external tanks. Each conformal tank has a capacity of 750 U.S. gallons of fuel. Despite the minor performance impact, they enhance range, decrease reliance on in-flight refueling, and allow the use of all external munition stations. Additionally, Sparrow or AMRAM missiles can be mounted on the corners of the CFTs. Initially utilized regularly by the USAF 57th Fighter Interceptor Squadron, based in NAS Keflavik, Iceland, for extended operations over the North Atlantic, the F-15E variant is now the primary user of CFTs following the closure of the 57 FIS. Israel and Saudi Arabia have also acquired CFTs. The United States Air Force is the main user of the F-15, it received its first F-15B fighter jet on November 13, 1974. The initial aircraft, equipped with the Hughes Aircraft APG-63 radar, now Raytheon, was delivered to the Combat Squadron 555th Tactical Fighter Squadron in January 1976. The first F-15's attack occurred in 1979 when Israeli Air Force Ace Moshe Melnik scored a victory. During IAF raids, F-15A reportedly took down 13 Syrian MiG-21s and two MiG-25s. In the 1982 Lebanon War, Israeli F-15s played a very important role, credited with destroying 41 Syrian aircraft. In Operation Mole Cricket 19, Israeli F-15s and F-16s jointly shot down 82 Syrian fighters without any losses. Israel stood out as the sole operator developing the air-to-ground capabilities of air superiority F-15 variants. This decision was influenced by the fighter's superior range compared to other Israeli combat aircraft in the 1980s. Notably, during Operation Wooden Leg in 1985, F-15s carried out a strike mission against PLO headquarters in Tunis, marking a rare use of air superiority F-15s in tactical strikes. Over time, Israeli air superiority F-15 variants have undergone extensive upgrades to carry a broader range of air-to-ground armaments, including JDAM GPS-guided bombs and Palpai missiles. On the 5th of June, 1984, Royal Saudi Air Force F-15C pilots reportedly shot down two Iranian Air Force F-4E Phantom Dasinus. This skirmish highlighted the F-15's effectiveness in air combat. In 1990, the United States Air Force sent F-15CD and E model planes to the Persian Gulf for operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. During the Gulf War, these F-15s were very successful achieving 36 out of 39 air-to-air -air victories against Iraqi forces. 
The F-15C and D were used for air superiority, while the F-15E Strike Eagles were mainly for night air-to-ground attacks. The F-15s played a crucial role, with F-15Cs alone having 34 confirmed defeats of Iraqi aircraft during the 1991 Gulf War. They targeted various Iraqi planes, including MiG-29, MiG-25s, MiG-23s, and others. The F-15E also scored its first air-to-air -air kill by destroying an Iraqi Mi-24 helicopter. During the conflict, air superiority was quickly achieved, and many later victories were against Iraqi planes fleeing to Iran rather than engaging in direct combat. Some F-15Cs were lost to ground fire, and one was damaged by a Scud strike. In another incident, a Royal Saudi Air Force pilot was defeated with an F-15C during Operation Desert Shield and Saudi F-15s later shot down two Iraqi Mirage F-1s. However, one Saudi F-15C was lost in a crash during the Persian Gulf War. The F-15s continued to be deployed in various operations, supporting missions in Iraq, Turkey, Bosnia, and other locations. In 1994, there was a tragic friendly fire incident in Iraq where USAF F-15Cs accidentally destroyed two U.S. Army Black Hawk helicopters. Later, during NATO's intervention in Kosovo in 1999, USAF F-15Cs shot down four Yugoslav MiG-29 using radar-guided missiles. In November 2007, the United States Air Force grounded all F-15s after a Missouri Air National Guard F-15 experienced a mid-air breakup and crashed. The investigation revealed a critical issue in the upper longerons of the F-15C, causing the front part of the aircraft, including the cockpit and radome, to separate from the rest of the plane. To address the problem, F-15A through D models were temporarily grounded for detailed inspections and necessary repairs. This grounding garnered attention as it strained the country's air defense capabilities. Some states had to depend on neighboring states' fighters for air defense, and Alaska relied on Canadian forces' support. On January 8, 2008, the USAF Air Combat Command allowed a portion of its older F-15 fleet to resume flying, recommending a limited return to flight for affected models worldwide. The Accident Review Board report, released on January 10, 2008, found that the Longeron in the F-15C did not meet specifications, leading to fatigue cracks and the eventual catastrophic failure of support structures, causing the aircraft to break up in flight. The report identified nine other F-15s with similar Longeron issues, raising concerns about the long-term viability of the F-15. By February 15, 2008, the Air Combat Command cleared all grounded F-15A-B-C-D fighters for flight pending inspections, engineering reviews, and necessary repairs. The ACC also recommended the release of other U.S. F-15A-B-C-Ds. This incident raised questions about the future of the F-15 and prompted extensive safety measures and evaluations to ensure the continued airworthiness of the fleet. Comparing the F-15 with the F-14 or Tomcat, it was noticed that they had similar design with its two engines, two seats, twin tails, and can fly at high speeds. The F-14 was created because an earlier project called the F-111D didn't work out. This fighter is big, well-equipped, and was the first among a series of American fighters designed based on lessons learned from air combat experiences against MiG fighters in the Vietnam War. The F-14 Tomcat was made to be good at both air-to-air -air combat and long-range interception for naval operations. It could work as an escort attack plane with Sparrow missiles or a defense interceptor with Phoenix missiles. The plane has a two-seat cockpit with a clear bubble canopy for great visibility during air-to-air -air combat. It has wings that can change shape during flight, swept back for high-speed intercept and forward for slower speeds. The design aimed to be better than the F-4 Phantom in air combat performance. The F-14 structure allows it to climb faster than the F-4, and its twin-tail design improves stability. 
It has a built-in 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon and can carry various anti-aircraft missiles. The twin engines are in separate nacelles, and the space between them holds fuel, controls, and weapons. The fuselage on its own provides a significant part of the F-14's lift, which helped one F-14 land safely after losing more than half of its right wing in a mid-air collision in 1991. Despite its similarity to the famous F-15, there were limitations with the avionics system. On the other hand, the F-15 features a versatile avionics system designed for multiple missions. This system comprises a head-up display, advanced radar, AN-ASN-109 inertial guidance system, flight instruments, ultra-high frequency communications, tactical air navigation system, and instrument landing system receivers. Additionally, it incorporates an internally mounted tactical electronic warfare system, identification friend or foe system, electronic countermeasures suite, and a central digital computer. The heads-up display plays a crucial role by projecting essential flight information gathered from the integrated avionics system. This display remains visible in various light conditions and serves as a means for the pilot to access vital information without diverting attention to cockpit instruments. Essentially, it enables the pilot to track and engage enemy aircraft efficiently, contributing to the aircraft's overall mission capabilities. The F-15 boasts adaptable APG-63 and 70 pulse Doppler radar systems capable of tracking both high- and low-flying targets with remarkable precision. These sophisticated radars are adept at discerning aircraft and swift, small targets across extensive distances ranging from beyond visual reach to close proximity, even down to treetop elevations. With a primary range extending to 100 miles, the APG-63 contributes vital target data to the central computer, optimizing the accuracy of weapon deployment. In close quarters aerial engagements, the radar seamlessly identifies adversary aircraft, projecting this critical information onto the pilot's head-up display. Complementing these radar capabilities, the F-15 integrates an electronic warfare system that furnishes comprehensive threat awareness through a radar warning receiver while simultaneously executing automatic countermeasures against specific threats. The synergy of these advanced radar and electronic warfare systems underscores the F-15's prowess in surveillance, target acquisition, and responsiveness in dynamic combat scenarios. These unbeatable capabilities of the F-15 series and its advanced designs have made it stand out in the world of aviation. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there.